Good afternoon. Here is the national news from BGI TV. Today, the fifth day in the month of August, year 2022. I am Maurice Rebi Lawal. First, I have a major headlines for the national news. We won't allow Lewin block Buhari's second senator. Biafra shut down iPod linked YouTube channels. Buhari government tells Google. Ex-IGP Tafa Balogun is dead. Late Asayi signed land document for Lao Texas Jain campus on sickbed. Makinde. Traders count losses as fire gulfs Delta markets. Terrorists kill three, abduct 13 in Katsina. State on insecurity. Government kidnapped three children in Ajaokuta. Demands 100 million naira. Soldiers beat police officers to death in Lagos. And now the news in detail. The Nigerian government has urged Google to shut down the YouTube channels belonging to the indigenous people of Biafra, Ipo. Lai Mohammed, the Minister of Information and Culture, had anchored its call on the fact that Ipo is proscribed organization, NAN reports. Mohammed made the call while receiving a team of Google officials on Thursday in Abuja. He listed such channels to include Biafra Digest TV, Umu Biafra TV, Biafra Digest, and Asa Biafra TV. The minister lamented that some of these channels use local languages and dialects during their broadcast to evade being censored. The platform is a platform of choice for IPOP, a prescribed terrorist group. We implore you not to make your platform available to them for their acts of violence and destabilization. We hope you will cooperate with us as well as our security agencies in the direction he said. The Nigerian government has also urged the channel to making sure that all sorts of criminalities is stopped in the country as regards the iPod TV and everything they do. And to the first story of the story this time, the Senator representing or show East and Vice Chairman, Senate Committee on Customs and Exercise, Francis Fadalsi, has said that opposition parties in the upper chamber of the National Assembly have made up their mind to sack the president of the Senate, Ahmed Lawan, if he made any attempt to frustrate the sacking process against the president, General Muhammad Buhari, retired next month. Padawansi, in an interview with journalists in Abuja on Wednesday, said majority of the senators across political party lines had already passed a vote of no confidence on Buhari because of his administration's inability to address the worsening security situation in the country. He expressed doubt about the president's ability to tackle the security challenges currently facing the country in six weeks, since he couldn't do so for seven years. We have now made up our mind to strike now that the iron is still hot instead of wasting our time. Cooperating with the Ahmed Lama leadership while the nation is being destroyed by terrorists with no plan by the government to stop them. We won't wait until we are all killed. We have now decided to pull out of the rubber stamp arrangement so that the whole of Nigeria would know that we have not been in support of the failing economy, the huge debt accumulation, fallen Naira, insecurity across the country, and the unprecedented forms of corruption going on in the pilots. On a sad note, a former Inspector General of Police IGP, Tafa Balogun, is there. Family sources confirmed his death on two daily trust on Thursday. Details of his passing were, however, with L. Balogun was born on August 8, 1947, at Ilao Rogun, Osho State, and was named the 21st Inspector General of Police, March 6, 2002. On April 4, 2005, Balogun was arraigned at the Federal High Court, Abuja, for stealing and laundering over 100 million US dollars in his three years as Inspector General of Police from the Police Treasury. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, brought 70 charges against him, but he made a plea bargain with the court in exchange for returning much of the property and money. He was sentenced to six months in jail. May his soul rest in peace. Oh, Governor Shei Makide of Oyo State has disclosed that the immediate past Ashen of Isei of Wasalauddin Adekule signed a land document for the construction of the Ishen campus of Laduki, Akitola University of Technology, on the sick bed. Makinde made this disclosure on Thursday. Daily Post recalls that the Ashen of Isei joined his ancestors last month. The monarch is one of the traditional rulers in the Okiogon, geopolitical zone of the states. 
marking it as a rebel revealed that the document for the land for construction of the Laote campus was given to the monarch on his sick bed a few days before his death. He said that the monarch signed the document less than 24 hours before he joined his ancestors. Makinde, while speaking, during his visit to the palace on Thursday, insisted that the monarch loved and worked for the development of the town. The governor promised that he would not abandon the family left behind by the monarch. Secondly, less than two days before Kabiusi passed on, the document for the land where Lautek was situated was given to Baba on a sick bed and he signed it before he left to join his ancestors. So another tragic event from Delta State. Traders at the popular Wari Myla waterside close to the Nigeria Port Authority in the Wari South local government area of Delta State have begun to count their losses following a fire incident in the market. This was as they called on the state government and relevant security agencies to take urgent actions to unravel the mystery behind the incident fire incident at the market. The market was gutted by fire on Wednesday night, during which goods and property worth millions of naira were destroyed. Witnesses said many houses and properties were destroyed in the fire disaster, adding that the inferno raged for several hours before the intervention of firefighters from the state fire service. It was the second time within this year the popular Wari Mila waterside was hit by fire disaster. Most of the affected traders and shop owners were thrown into confusion as they counted their losses and tried to salvage what was left. One of the affected shop owners, who identified himself as Lazarus Mbanifo, stated that the lost goods worth 5 million naira to the inferno while lamenting how he would restart his life. On insecurity again, three people have lost their lives and 13 others, including women and children, who were abducted by terrorists who attacked two communities in Katsina State. It was at Dent Somni and Batawara. Local girl council that the death occurred and 13 were kidnapped at Nancy Nata. 13 others were abducted and moved to an unknown destination. The then Saunese incident occurred on Wednesday at about 11 a.m., while that of Sinan happened at about 9.30 p.m. of the same day, into the wee hours of yesterday. The Guardian guarded that the terrorists also injured several people as they operated for about an hour at Len Saoni without resistance from any security agent or resident. One of the victims, Abdul Malik Abba, was said to have left the state capital for his farm in the community when a terrorist struck. He was killed along with two others. As Natsi Nataya, a source said that the terrorists first abducted 26 people, but later released some and left with four men women, two girls and seven men. The source said the terrorists had left their motorcycles at Dutsin Lema, a community a few kilometers away from Natsi Nataya, to carry out their operation. Public Relations Officer PPRO SP Gambo Isa confirmed that Lens Aoni incident, but said that one person was killed while three sustained injuries. He had yet to confirm the Netsi Nata incident at the time of his report. Still on insecurity, this from Kogi State. A non government on Wednesday kidnapped three children in Ajakuta, local government area of Kogi State. Daily Post gathered that the incident happened at about 8 p.m. in Kaduna Estate, Ajakuta Steel Township Complex. The incident is coming a few days after three policemen and five vigilantes were killed by a no unidentified gunman in Jida Basa under Ajakuta local government. According to eyewitness, the gunmen, who were fully armed, shot periodically in the air to scare security agents and neighbors from the scene before kidnapping the three children. A family source who created anonymity identified the father of the kidnapped children as Mr. Kaderi, who hails from Edo State. The source said the gunman on Thursday morning contacted the family of the victim, demanding a hundred million naira. It was also gathered that the kidnapped children are ages 5, 7, and 10, respectively. Narrating how the incident happened, the source said the government came in their numbers fully armed to the house of Mr. Kaleri, our brother, that sells television, radio, and electronic devices in the still township. From insecurity straight, we'll go to Lagos State. Soldiers from the Ojo military cantonment on Wednesday beat a police officer identified as Inspector Monday Orube to death in Lagos over rights to way. The soldiers, who were said to be over 30 in numbers, were reported to have kidnapped two policemen who were working as traffic warden to their barracks while the third officer managed to escape from being kidnapped. A source claimed that a slain crew 
which the soldiers were driving in the coastal boat was stopped by the three police officers who were on duty at the time of the incident to allow other road users on their other lane to pass, not knowing that the coastal boat was conveying soldiers who were still behind. The soldiers got infuriated and insisted on taking one way during an argument with the officers. They were said to have pounced on the officers and beat them to utter pork. The soldiers also kidnapped two of the police officers in their barracks and were beaten continued. The source further said when the soldiers noticed that the affected policemen became unconscious, they decided to take them to their hospital at the cantonment. However, one of the police officers, Inspector Monde Orube, unfortunately gave up the ghost on Thursday afternoon. Another source further disclosed that the soldiers who were going to their cantonment in the coastal bus were stopped by the police officers and they got angry and asked why civilians would be allowed to pass before them. That concludes the national news from BGI TV. Before we go, some major headlines. We won't allow law and block Buhari Sakin, Senator. Shut down iPublin YouTube channels. Buhari's government tells Google. Ex-IGP Tafa Balogun is dead. And finally, soldiers beat police officer to death in Lagos. That concludes the national news this hour. For more updates on YouTube, our handle is Baba Bagini Imor TV. Can you subscribe? Click on the notification bell, select option all to access our broadcast. On Facebook, Bagini Imor with Alamuni Adibayo. Please like and follow the page. On Instagram, Bagini Imor underscore 22. For other placements of the goods and services, coverage of events and function, please dial the phone number streaming on the screen for other placements only. Thank you for watching. I am Mugorire Rabila Nawal. Good afternoon and Juma Mubarak to all Muslim faithfuls.